The Second Coming sometimes called the Second Advent or the Parousia is a Christian and Islamic belief regarding the future or past return of Jesus Christ after his supposed ascension to heaven about 2,000 years ago. The idea is based on messianic prophecies and is part of most Christian eschatologies. Views about the nature of Jesus's Second Coming vary among Christian denominations and among individual Christians. Topic. Terminology. Several different terms are used to refer to the second coming of Christ. In the New Testament, the Greek word epiphania, epiphania appearing, is used five times to refer to the return of Christ. The Greek New Testament uses the Greek term parousia, parousia meaning arrival, coming, or presence, 24 times, 17 of them concerning Christ. However, parousia has the distinct reference to a period of time rather than an instance in time. At Matthew chapter 24 verse 37 parousia is used to clearly describe the period of time that Noah lived. The Greek word eleusis which means coming is not interchangeable with parousia. So this parousia or presence would be unique and distinct from anything that had occurred before. The word is also used six times referring to individuals Stephanas, Fortunatus and Achaicus, 1 Co. 1617 Titus, 2 Co. 7-6-72 and Paul the Apostle 2 Co. 1010 Phil 126 212 and one time referring to the coming of the lawless one. To these 2 to 9, Gustav Adolf Deismann showed that the Greek word parousia occurred as early as the 3rd century BC to describe the visit of a king or dignitary to a city, a visit arranged in order to show the visitor's magnificence to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Last day counterfeits Some Christian writings say that there will be a great deception before the second coming of Christ. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus states in the following passage, If anyone says to you then, look, here is the Messiah, or, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will arise, and they will perform signs and wonders so great as to deceive, if that were possible, even the elect. Ellen G. White, the early Seventh-day Adventist leader, wrote, As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will impersonate Christ. The Church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation, Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 to 15. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air. Christ has come. Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him, while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them, as Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth. His voice is soft and subdued, yet full of melody. In gentle, compassionate tones he presents some of the same gracious, heavenly truths which the Savior uttered, he heals the diseases of the people, and then, in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday, and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. Topic. Specific date predictions and claims A number of specific dates have been predicted for the second coming of Christ, some now in the distant past, others still in the future. Topic. Christian eschatological views Most English versions of the Nicene Creed include the following statements less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in his glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come topic early christianity jesus was reported to have told his disciples Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened." Given that in his next statement Jesus notes that the exact day and hour is unknown even to himself, the simple meaning of his previous statement is that the second coming was to be witnessed by people literally living in that same generation. Some, such as Jerome, interpret the phrase, 
this generation to mean in the lifetime of the Jewish race. However, other scholars believe that if Jesus meant race, he would have used genos race, not genia generation. Victor J. Stenger notes that Jesus is recorded as saying, There are some standing here, which shall not taste death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. He makes similar predictions in five other places in the Gospels, Mark chapter 9 verse 1, Mark chapter 13 verse 30, Matt 24 34, Luke chapter 9 verse 27, Luke chapter 21 verse 32. In Stenger's view, when the coming did not happen within the lifetimes of his disciples, as Jesus prophesied, Christianity changed its emphasis to the resurrection and promise of eternal life. According to historian Charles Freeman, early Christians expected Jesus to return within a generation of his death, and the non occurrence of the second coming surprised the early Christian communities. Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared, from this we know that it is the last hour. Topic. Preterism The position associating the Second Coming with first-century events such as the destruction of Jerusalem and of the Jewish Temple in AD 70 is known as preterism. Some preterists see this coming of the Son of Man in glory, primarily fulfilled in Jesus' death on the cross. They believe the apocalyptic signs are already fulfilled, including the sun will be dark. CF Mark 13:24 to 15:33 the powers will be shaken CF Mark chapter 13 verse 25 minus 14 to 63 15 to 5 and then they will see CF Mark 13 26 to 1531 1539 yet some critics note that many are missing such as but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up." 2 Peter 3 verse 10. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24 verse 30. Topic. Catholic and Orthodox It is the traditional view of Roman Catholics and Orthodox Christians, preserved from the early Church, that the Second Coming will be a sudden and unmistakable incident, like a flash of lightning. Mount 2427 They hold the general view that Jesus will not spend any time on the earth in ministry or preaching. They also agree that the ministry of the Antichrist will take place right before the Second Coming. Many Christian denominations consider this Second Coming of Christ to be the final and eternal judgment by God of the people in every nation, resulting in the glorification of some and the punishment of others. The concept is found in all the canonical Gospels, particularly the Gospel of Matthew. A decisive factor in this last judgment during the Second Coming of Christ will be the question if the corporal works of mercy were practiced or not during lifetime. They rate as important acts of charity. Therefore, and according to the biblical sources Mount 531-46, the conjunction of the last judgment and the works of mercy is very frequent in the pictorial tradition of Christian art. Orthodox layman Alexander Kalamiros explains the original church's position regarding the second coming in river of fire and against false union, stating that those who contend that Christ will reign on earth for a thousand years, do not wait for Christ, but for the Antichrist. The idea of Jesus returning to this earth as a king is a heretical concept to the church, equated to the expectations of the Jews who wanted the Messiah to be an earthly king. The church instead teaches that which it has taught since the beginning. Christ will not return to earth, rather the kingdom of heaven, the new Jerusalem, will be established through the resurrection of the dead. Topic. Protestant. The many denominations of Protestantism have differing views on the exact details of Christ's second coming. Only a handful of Christian organizations claim complete and authoritative interpretation of the typically symbolic and prophetic biblical sources. A short reference to the second coming is contained in the Nicene Creed. He Jesus shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. An analogous statement is also in the Biblical Pauline Creed 1 Cor 15 Some Protestant churches proclaim the mystery of faith to be, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Topic: The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Latter-day Saints have particularly distinct and specific interpretations of what are considered to be signs stated in the Book of Revelation. Their scriptures say that Christ will return, as stated in the Bible. Their church also teaches that, "...when the Savior comes again, he will come in power and glory to claim the earth as his kingdom. His second coming will mark the beginning of the millennium. The second coming will be a fearful, mournful time for the wicked, but it will be a day of peace for the righteous." Seventh-day Adventists Fundamental belief number 25 of the Seventh-day Adventist Church states, The second coming of Christ is the blessed hope of the Church, the grand climax of the Gospel. The Savior's coming will be literal, personal, visible, and worldwide. When he returns, the righteous dead will be resurrected, and together with the righteous living will be glorified and taken to heaven, but the unrighteous will die. The almost complete fulfillment of most lines of prophecy, together with the present condition of the world, indicates that Christ's coming is imminent. The time of that event has not been revealed, and we are therefore exhorted to be ready at all times. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, Heb, 9:28, John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3, Acts chapter 1 verses 9 to 11, Matt 24:14, Rev 1 to 7, Matt 24:43, 44, 1 Thess 4:13 minus 18, 1 Cor 15:51 minus 54, 2 Thess 1 to 7 minus 10, 2 to 8, Rev 14:14 14, 14 minus 20, 19:11 minus 21, Matt 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 21, 2 Tim. 3 to 1 minus 5, 1 Thess. 5 to 1 minus 6. Topic: Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses rarely use the term "second coming," preferring the term "presence" as a translation of parousia. They believe that Jesus' comparison of the presence of the Son of Man with the days of Noah. At Matthew chapter 24 verses 37 to 39 and Luke chapter 17 verses 26 to 30 suggests a duration rather than a moment of arrival. They also believe that biblical chronology points to 1914 as the start of Christ's presence, which continues until the final battle of Armageddon. Other biblical expressions they correlate with this period include the time of the end, Dan 12 to 4, the conclusion of the system of things. Matt 13 40, 49, 24 to 3, and the last days. 2 Tim 3 2 1, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Witnesses believe Christ's millennial reign begins after Armageddon. Topic: <laughs> Christian fundamentalism. A recent survey, 2010, showed that about 40 percent of Americans believe that Jesus is likely to return by 2050. This varies from 58% of white evangelical Christians, through 32% of Catholics to 27% of white mainline Protestants. Belief in the Second Coming was popularized in the U.S. in the late 19th century by the evangelist Dwight L. Moody, and the premillennial interpretation became one of the core components of Christian fundamentalism in the 1920s. Topic: <laughs> Esoteric Christian teachings. In Rosicrucian esoteric Christian teaching, there is a clear distinction between the cosmic Christ, or Christ without, and the Christ within. According to this tradition, the Christ within is regarded as the true Savior who needs to be born within each individual in order to evolve toward the future sixth epoch in the Earth's etheric plane, that is, toward the new heavens and a new Earth, the new Galilee. The second coming or advent of the Christ is not in a physical body, but in the new soul body of each individual in the etheric plane of the planet where man shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The day and hour of this event is not known. The esoteric Christian tradition teaches that first there will be a preparatory period as the sun enters Aquarius, an astrological concept, by procession, the coming age of Aquarius. Other views and commentaries Baha'i Faith Baha'u'llah announced that the return of Christ, understood as a reappearance of the Word and Spirit of God, was manifest in his person. 
Bahá'u'lláh wrote to Pope Pius IX, He who is the Lord of Lords is come overshadowed with clouds. He, verily, hath again come down from heaven even as he came down from it the first time. Beware that thou dispute not with him even as the Pharisees disputed with him without a clear token or proof. He goes on to refer to himself as the Ancient of Days and the Pen of Glory. Bahá'u'lláh also said in this connection, This is the Father foretold by Isaiah, and the Comforter concerning whom the Spirit had covenanted with you. Open your eyes, O concourse of bishops, that ye may behold your Lord seated upon the throne of might and glory. Bahá'u'lláh also wrote, Say, We, in truth, have given ourselves as a ransom for your own lives. Alas, when we came once again, we beheld you fleeing from us, whereat the eye of my loving kindness wept sore over my people. Followers of the Baha'i faith believe that the fulfillment of the prophecies of the second coming of Jesus, as well as the prophecies of the Maitreya and many other religious prophecies, were begun by the Bab in 1844 and then by Baha'u'llah. They commonly compare the fulfillment of Christian prophecies to Jesus' fulfillment of Jewish prophecies, where in both cases people were expecting the literal fulfillment of apocalyptic statements. Baha'is claim that the return of Christ with a new name parallels the return of Elijah in John the Baptist as stated by Jesus in the Gospels. <laughs> Islam In Islam, Jesus or Isa, Arabic, Isi Isa is considered to be a messenger of God and the Masi Messiah who was sent to guide the Israelites Bani Israel and Gentiles with a new scripture, the Injil. The belief in Jesus and all other messengers of God is required in Islam, and a requirement of being a Muslim. However, Muslims do not recognize Jesus as the Son of God, as they believe God has no equals, but instead as a prophet. The Quran states that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Muslims believe that Jesus performed all the miracles in the Gospels, but do not believe that Jesus was crucified. In the Quran, the second coming of Jesus is heralded in Az Zukruf, the Quran's 43rd surah or chapter, as a sign of the day of judgment. And Jesus shall be a sign for the coming of the hour of judgment. Therefore, have no doubt about the hour, but follow ye me. This is a straight way. 43 to 61. In his famous interpretation of the Quran or Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim, Ibn Kathir also uses this verse as proof of Jesus' second coming in the Quran. There are also hadiths that clearly foretell of Jesus' future return such as, Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 3, Book 43, Kitab al-Ilm Book of Knowledge, Hadith number 656. The hour will not be established until the Son of Mary i.e. Jesus descends amongst you as a just ruler, he will break the cross idol symbol of Christians, kill the pigs, and abolish the jizya tax. Money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it as charitable gifts. According to Islamic tradition, Jesus' descent will be in the midst of wars fought by the Mahdi lit. the rightly guided one. Known in Islamic eschatology as the Redeemer of Islam, against the Masih ad dajjal literally false messiah, synonymous with the Antichrist and his followers. Jesus will descend at the point of a white arcade, east of Damascus, dressed in saffron robes, his head anointed. He will then join the Mahdi in his war against the Dajjal. Jesus, considered in Islam as a Muslim, one who submits to God, and one of God's messengers, will abide by the Islamic teachings. Eventually, Jesus will slay the Antichrist Dajjal, and then everyone from the people of the book Al Al Kitab, referring to Jews and Christians, will believe in him. Thus, there will be one community, that of Islam. Sahih Muslim, 41 to 7023. After the death of the Mahdi, Jesus will assume leadership. This is a time associated in Islamic narrative with universal peace and justice. Islamic texts also allude to the appearance of Yajuj and Majuj known also as Gog and Magog, ancient tribes which will disperse and cause disturbance on earth. God, in response to Jesus's prayers, will kill them by sending a type of worm in the napes of their necks. Jesus's rule is said to be around 40 years, after which he will die. According to Islam Jesus did not die on the cross but was taken up to heaven and continues to live until his return in the second coming. Muslims will then perform the Salat al-Janazah funeral prayer for him and bury him in the city of Medina in a grave left vacant beside Muhammad. Topic. Ahmadiyya The Ahmadi sect, who identify as Muslims, believe that the promised Mahdi and Messiah arrived in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad 1835 
This is rejected by many Muslims, who consider the Ahmadiyya not to be Muslims. The Hadith sayings of the Islamic prophet Muhammad and the Bible indicated that Jesus would return during the latter days. Islamic tradition commonly depicts that Jesus, upon his second coming, would be an Amati Muslim and a follower of Muhammad and that he would revive the truth of Islam rather than fostering a new religion. The Ahmadiyya movement interpret the second coming of Jesus prophesied as being that of a person, similar to Jesus, Mathil i Isa, and not his physical return, in the same way as John the Baptist resembled the character of the biblical prophet Elijah in Christianity. Ahmadis believe that Ghulam Ahmad demonstrated that the prophecy in Muslim and Christian religious texts were traditionally misunderstood to suggest that Jesus of Nazareth himself would return, and hold that Jesus had survived the crucifixion and had died a natural death. Ahmadis consider Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the founder of the movement, in both his character and teachings, to be representative of Jesus, and subsequently, he attained the same spiritual rank of prophethood as Jesus. Thus, Ahmadis believe this prediction was fulfilled and continued by his movement. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Judaism. Judaism believes that Jesus is one of the false Jewish Messiah claimants because he failed to fulfill any messianic prophecies, which include build the third temple, Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 26 to 28. Gather all Jews back to the land of Israel Isaiah chapter 43 verses 5 to 6. Usher in an era of world peace, and end all hatred, oppression, suffering and disease. As it says, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall man learn war any more. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. Spread universal knowledge of the God of Israel, which will unite humanity as one. As it says, God will be king over all the world, on that day, God will be one and his name will be one." Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9. Regarding the Christian idea that these prophecies will be fulfilled during a second coming, or Samayach states, We find this to be a contrived answer, since there is no mention of a second coming in the Jewish Bible. Second, why couldn't God accomplish his goals the first time round? Rabbi David Wolpe believes that the second coming was grown out of genuine disappointment. When Jesus died, true believers had to theologically compensate for the disaster. Topic: <inaudible> Rastafari. In the early developments of the Rastafari religion, Haile Selassie, the Ethiopian emperor, was regarded as a member of the House of David, is worshipped as God incarnate, and is thought to be the Black Jesus and Black Messiah, the second coming of Christ. It was claimed that Marcus Garvey preached the coming of the Black Messiah on the eve of Selassie's coronation. Due to this prophecy, Selassie was the source of inspiration of the poor and uneducated Christian populations of Jamaica, who believed that the emperor would liberate the black people from the subjugation of European colonists. Topic: <laughs> Paramahansa Yogananda's commentary. In modern times, some traditional Indian religious leaders have moved to embrace Jesus as an avatar or incarnation of God. In light of this, the Indian guru Paramahansa Yogananda, author of Autobiography of a Yogi, wrote an extensive commentary on the Gospels published in 2004 in the two-volume set The Second Coming of Christ, The Resurrection of the Christ Within You. The book offers a mystical interpretation of the Second Coming in which it is understood to be an inner experience, something that takes place within the individual heart. In the introduction of this book, Yogananda wrote that the true second coming is the resurrection within you of the infinite Christ consciousness. Also stated in the book of Luke, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or, Lo there, for, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke chapter 17 verse 21 Diamata wrote in the preface of the second coming of Christ that the Two-volume scriptural treatise thus represents the inclusive culmination of Paramahansa Yogananda's divine commission to make manifest to the world the essence of original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ." In sharing her memories of when she wrote down his words, she shares the great guru, his face radiantly enraptured, as he records for the world the inspired exposition of the gospel teachings imparted to him through direct, personal communion with Jesus of Nazareth. Larry Dossie, M.D., wrote that, 
Paramahansa Yogananda's The Second Coming of Christ is one of the most important analyses of Jesus' teachings that exists. Many interpretations of Jesus' words divide peoples, cultures, and nations, these foster unity and healing, and that is why they are vital for today's world. In modern culture Jesus Christ returning to Earth has been a theme in several movies and books, for example, Black Jesus – Comedy Central Adult Swim television series 2014, created by Aaron Magruder and Mike Clattenburg, tells the story of Jesus living in modern-day Compton, California, and his efforts to spread love and kindness on a daily basis. He is supported in his mission by a small but loyal group of downtrodden followers, while facing conflicts involving corrupt preachers, ethnic tensions, and the hate-spreading activities of the manager of his apartment complex. Left Behind – Film and Book Franchise 1995, built by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins based on the time period before, during and after the Second Coming of Christ. The Seventh Sign 1988 film starring Demi Moore about a pregnant lady who discovers the Second Coming of Christ has rented a room from her, in order to begin the countdown that will trigger the apocalypse. End of Days 1999 action-adventure film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger about a policeman who must stop Satan before he ends the world. Scars, Christian fiction end-times thriller by Patience Prince 2010 novel about a girl named Becky who struggles through the time of the Great Tribulation. At the End of All Things by Stony Graves 2011 novel about the days following the rapture, and right before the final war between God and Satan. The Second Coming, a love story by Scott Pinsker 2014 novel about two men who claim to be the Second Coming of Christ. Each claims that the other is a liar, but only one is telling the truth. Thief in the Night by William Bernard Sears, the popular TV and radio personality plays the role of a detective in writing a book about identifying the clues and symbols from the biblical prophecies of the return of the Christ that have been overlooked or misunderstood, and settles on a shocking conclusion 2002, 1961. Oxford, UK, George Ronald. ISBN 0-85398-008-X. Mr. Robot, USA Network Television Series 2015, uses visual and verbal references to biblical figures and events based on the Second Coming. Topic see also List of Messiah claimants List of people claimed to be Jesus Life of Jesus in the New Testament Realized Eschatology The Second Coming Poem, by William Butler Yeats Topic References Topic Bibliography C.S. Lewis, 1960. The World's Last Night and Other Essays. Harcourt Brace Jovanovich. ISBN 0-15-698360-5 Max Heindel. How Shall We Know Christ at His Coming? May 1913 Stenographic Report of a Lecture, Los Angeles, ISBN 0-911274-64-2 Marcus Molling. Grundinformation Eschatology. Systematische Theologie aus der Perspektive der Hoffnung, Vandenhoek and Ruprecht, Göttingen 2007, ISBN 978-3-525-03619-8, James Stuart Russell. The Perusia, A Careful Look at the New Testament Doctrine of the Lord's Second Coming, London 1887 Emanuel Swedenborg. The Consummation of the Age, The Coming of the Lord, and the New Heaven and New Church, Chapter 14 in the True Christian Religion Containing the Universal Theology of the New Church Foretold by the Lord in Daniel 7, 13, 14, and in Revelation Chapter 21, 1, 2 Swedenborg Foundation 1952 Henry Wandsbrow. The New Jerusalem Bible 1990. Doubleday. ISBN 0-385-14264-1 Paramahansa Yogananda. The Second Coming of Christ, The Resurrection of the Christ Within You. Self-Realization Fellowship, 2004. ISBN 978-0876125557 Topic External links Lecture 15, On the Clause, And Shall Come in Glory to Judge the Quick and the Dead, of Whose Kingdom There Shall Be No End, delivered by Cyril of Jerusalem in the mid-fourth century. The Second Coming, a summary article. A critical summary of The Second Coming by W. B. Yeats Rise Notes.